I'm Amy, sex educator, sex and relationship coach, and co-owner of PurePleasureShop.com. I'm April, VP of the cutting-edge sex toy company Hot Octopus, and I dedicate my life to the business of sex. We are on a mission to teach you how to have hot sex, deep intimacy, and how to make your own rules for who you are as a sexual being. Welcome Welcome to to the the Shameless Sex Revolution. Want to learn more? Go to shamelesssex.com. And for 50% off of some of our favorite sex toys, use code SHAMELESSSEX at purepleasureshop.com. You are listening to a pleasure podcast. For more from our sex podcast collective, visit pleasurepodcasts.com. Well, hello, everyone. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Shameless Sex Podcast. We are back from the lake. Episode number 200 and I don't remember. It's like almost 230 or something. Is it? Or 231. Is it 230? I don't know. It'll be, yeah, something like that. How do people remember all of those things? Uh, well, they all don't. I do sometimes. But <laughs> well, I will say that I am impressed of our repertoire and our library of Shameless Sex catalog. Well, we also started this in uh, 2017. We did this as a passion project. We've been we married s- for four years now, We've Amy. been married for four whole years. Is that four years? Well, four it was years. four years yeah, ago yeah. when we started You're this. Right, we're, mar- yeah. we're married by the podcast. And then we said we would do five episodes and just like check it, check in and be like, is this our, is our jam do? And we just never look back. Look at us now. And the other day we were eating uh, in Santa Cruz outside and someone's like, show us up. As it like, like, drove by. <laughs> we're like, what's up? Hey, listener, you're awesome. We love you. Oh, and then we were just at the lake and we met someone else there that uh, was a listens. fan. Yeah. Oh, and to that listener, what? Is a group of cheetahs called a coalition of <laughs> cheetahs? That goes straight to that listener. Everyone else is like, "What the hell?" It's are you a coalition about? of cheetahs. I know, I like that. You told me that. What was the one that you guys were sad about? Like, oh well, nice. uh, your mom's partner didn't believe me about a waddle of penguins, <laughs> and she was like, "I don't think so." I was like, "I swear, it's a waddle." And then someone Googled it, and then the one that was, "Oh, the unkindness of ravens." Oh yeah, it's sad. Yeah. So this episode is all about group. Names. It's all about group names of birds and other animals. Um, yeah. So everyone tuned out. Just kidding. So we were at the lake with my mom, my mom's partner, and some other family members and some friends, and we were playing the sun. That's where we actually recorded our last podcast episode. If you listened, it was lovely. And now we're back in Santa Cruz, which is also lovely. I love Santa Cruz. Every I time I drive back a, home, a good I love party it. trick though, which Amy sometimes cuts me off because when it goes on for twenty minutes, she I'm was like, cut you off. She's like, no we're more. Done. Everybody's done. The topic but I was like, had changed, and you did, went back. But I, but, but I was obsessed with that. But I, I only want to put it out there. If you want a good party trick, look at it's it's old English, and I have no idea where they came up. They meaning, I guess, the folks that discovered the language of the English, the discoverers, uh, or from derived from Latin and then moving on from there. However, the group names of animals are they're entertaining. Yes, they are. They're entertaining, and. It's actually joyful. Yes. And every time I talk about the kaleidoscope of butterflies that are flying by, <laughs> you get excited, Amy. April, what do you call a group of G-spots? Uh, a giggle. <laughs> a giggle. A giggle. What do you call a group of strap-ons? A sex a, shop? Uh, <laughs> a savagery. What do you call a group of sex toys for penetrative sex? A... Dildos? Po- I, <laughs> yeah, I was going to say this. podiatry, but I was like, nope, that's a, f- that's a feet. Well, that's what this podcast is on, everyone. <laughs> G-spot strap-ons and sex toys for penetrative sex with Glenice, who is a innovative sex toy maker who's going to talk to us about uh, G-spots. Also, is it real? But also their passion for creating a new uh, strap-on hands-free device. If you would have asked me what you call a group of sex toys, I would have said a penetration. Oh, see, that's and good. That's why it was hard. So we can create this category just now. So you no you can be the new English of these groups. I'll be the new English. All right, cool. Well, anyway, so we're gonna dive in. <laughs> Otherwise, April's going to be talking about groups for about twenty minutes. April, Amy's gonna be like, Chip, Chip we're, we're gonna, done. We're, we're editing we're this mov- right now. We're Stop moving making on. my job hard. New topic. Um, some other news. Uh, my everyone who knows about my dog, he's healing. He still has a little bandage on his leg. He he's got surgery. Raging. He's, he's doing well, raging slowly. We can't let him move. I was <laughs> impressed with his movement. This is the first day I have seen him since I left the lake, yeah. and 
He's doing quite well. Yeah, we he still was have, spoiled run. Oh yeah, he got all the attention. We have five more weeks of healing, so I'm very grateful for his life. And we He's just have good. to speak. I have to speak on legend. I have to speak on the amazing dog carrier where his where uh, Perry's legs are oh, extended yeah. outward, and you just walk around with it. And I'm like, yeah. I was wearing it today into the bar restaurant on the I way back it. from the lake, and people, oh my god. It's like taking pictures of it. Well, then the wounded <laughs> arm that oh, is yeah, very the phallic. Cast. Which yes. you know how people have service animals. Um, I and I'm in service to him with that little cast, but I'm pretty sure he gets me in and everywhere I want to go with that thing. So it's real yeah. cute. It's yeah, it's real cute and it's sad. adorable. It's kind of sad. All right. Anyway, so we will get into the podcast. Uh, before we do, guess what, everyone? We are giving away free sex toys, lube, access to our online workshops. How do you do it? Do you, you just have to keep listening because we will tell you. Um, we are working with our dear friend, Will, Willy Willy's Hot Sauce. A.K.A. Willy Willy. It's really, really good. It's yeah. will, it is really, really good. I yeah. just used it on my breakfast this morning. This is oh, not the ad either. This no. is legitimate information about my morning. But for the next two weeks, so this is now through July 27th of 2021, if you buy some Willy Willy Hot Sauce, and again, you'll learn more about where to do that. But I'll tell you right now, you go to willywillyhotsauce.com slash shameless, and you get two bottles for $10, and then you get entered in a raffle to win free can sex you toys. put the hot sauce on Lube. the sex toys hmm. i wouldn't we are recommend not liable inserting for that. those you could lick it off you could lick it off i mean yeah um to each their own and it you're might on your burn own a little bit and someone's into it this is not a disclaimer to do that i'm just curious we'll if that's april will try it later we'll let you know how it goes um i'm gonna try it on you then yeah. well anyways free sex toys free lube and the lube that we're giving away is uber lube y'all know about uber lube let me tell you about uber lube in our expert opinion one of the best lubes out there. It's silicone. It's long lasting. It never gets sticky. It has no flavor, no scent. It's great for vaginal, oral, anal. April, I heard in the past you put a little bit in your mouth for the before the BJ's. I feel like that is my my other party trick besides the animal <laughs> group names <laughs> is adding a little dash of Uber lube to the mouth and it makes all of the oral pleasures go way easier because your mouth gets a little dry from a lack of salvation. And it has no flavor, no Sa- sense. Actually, salvation or uh, salvation. What do you call a group of <laughs> saliva? <laughs> salvation. salivation. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, it's adorable. Uh, anyways, if you would like to try what we think is the best lube ever, go to uberlube.com. You get 10% off and free shipping. You probably won't regret it. You can join the fan club and be like, wow, I didn't know Luke could be this good. Don't regret it. Don't regret. No regrets. Okay, so um, here's a sex question. Are you ready? I think so. So I do not know who this is from, and I think a lot of people will read this, and they're like, this is from a penis owner, and I don't know. So I am going to say I don't know the kind of bits that this All person right. is rocking. Good to know. My wife has amazing orgasms with her vibrator, but she only has small ones when I go down on her. I'm really, really jealous. She's never had anyone care about her pleasure, so she's used to taking care of, in air quotes, herself. How do I get past this jealousy? So this person is jealous of the pleasure that their wife gets, which is just a partner, that the partner gets with sex toys. Uh, And yet the partner still has some orgasms or has orgasms when this person goes down on them, but they're not as big and profound as the vibrator. And so this person is feeling jealousy. Mm -hmm. Um, One of the first things that comes to mind for me is when you're jealous I guess, what, are you clear on like what you're jealous of or about? Do you feel inferior? Do you feel like you're not good enough? Is this questioning your worthiness or your purpose? Does it make you, not make you feel, does it inspire the feeling of you being a bad, I'm doing air quotes again, lover? Um, or like it's your job to give your partner all of their pleasure and if they get it somewhere else that there's a problem? I say all these things because I don't agree with really any of those at all. And I think that a lot of people take the on for themselves as there's something wrong with me if I'm not the one to do that for you. I, I want to ask a question about the piece that my wife has amazing orgasms with her vibrator, but she only has small ones when I go down on her. You're the person that's asking the question. You're not your wife or your partner, right? So how do you know that there's a hierarchy of orgasms there that you can define those as amazing. Did you discover something that was the reaction of her orgasm with the vibrator was not what you were getting when you were offering your experience in, in the physicality with your sexual experience with her. But I don't, I don't feel like it's fair to, to judge the orgasm on the reaction because they're not in the body of their partner, so... I wonder if it's because the sounds are louder? You know, is yeah. it more noisy? Do they seem like there's more moaning? And, may- and maybe they are. You know, and maybe, let's just let's just 
guess. But have they Maybe. asked? Maybe. Yeah, have, have you asked? asked have you checked in? But what if they are, though? So what if the partner's like, you know what? Yeah, from this vibrator, my orgasms are pretty top notch. It's kind of as good as it gets for me. What about that is so um, challenging for you? And I'm not, and I'm not judging. I just want you to get curious about yourself. Why is that a problem? This person that you care about is having pleasure. They're getting it from something other than you. Yet you still get to be there. It sounds like I don't know. Maybe you don't. Are they, is your also is your wife just doing that in, in hiding, and you don't get to be a part of it? So maybe that's a thing. I want to be a part of it. Can I use the vibrator on you? Can I have my body on you or in you or you in me while you're using the vibrator? But also, don't shame them from using it on their own too. That's it's, what I where, where I would go with this if I had any advice would be how can you incorporate the vibrator into your experience with your partner and how can you if that vibrator is getting her off with these orgas- orgasms that are incredible are there ways that you can incorporate them into your experiences with each other that can also have you be a, a piece of those orgasms yeah. and I, I think again like like what you were saying, there's no, oh, hierarchy and, and you're having an orgasm this way, but you're having smaller ones with me. I think yeah. like being supportive of, of her having orgasms. Pleasure is pleasure. Yeah. Be, yeah, be stoked, stoked on that if you can. And you're, I, Okay, but here's the thing. You're having a hard time, so I don't want to shame you again, but here's the other thing. Does the vibrator kiss your wife? Does your vibrator snuggle your wife? Does your vibrator say loving things? Does your wa- vibrator get to go on adventures or, you know, you do wonderful things with your partner that, you know, it's a, it's a robot that gives this person pleasure. So maybe that's your thing. You remind Yourself. Mechanical device, right? Mechanical device, yeah. I mean, it's, well, maybe a robot. I don't know. That'd be kind know. of badass. But, but it's not a human, and it doesn't do all these other things that you can do, and you get to share. And it's just a wonderful way. It's a bonus. That's how April and I talk about sex toys, and people are threatened by it. Look at it as a bonus. Same with orgasm. Let's look at them as bonuses, and not have the end goal be orgasm, and the sex toy be like the end all thing. This is just an addition to make things from good to great, or or better, or amazing, or whatever. But it doesn't mean there's a problem. I think that is probably one of the best pieces that I've ingested over the years, understanding that vibrators, sex toys in general, whether they vibrate or not, are a key to enhancing the sexual experience, whether it's uh, a solo or with a partner or with partners. And some association that I did, I think maybe it was, oh, it was on an interview we, you and I did with the Australian uh, bloggers, oh. the Flossy folks. Yeah. I talked about vibrators being almost like a fork and a knife, like utensils. You could still eat with your hands and you can still have the same amazing experience with your hands eating the food. You can also use a fork and a knife and a spoon and it just has that vessel to carry you into the experience deeper. Yeah. I don't know if that's genius or just weird. I but like that's, it. Was, was an association that I was like, yeah, this is it. what I think. I think it's great. And I, I think speaking for myself, so I have my easiest orgasms with, with vibrators, some really great ones with vibrators. My favorite orgasms aren't with vibrators, but they're harder to obtain and they're a little more rare. They're the transcendent 15 minute ones that I have not had a you know a ton in my life, but I've had them. Um, and I still have, have really good or, and great orgasms without vibrators too. And yet I think if you heard me with my vibrator um, in that orgasm, I'm really loud. I'm having a great old time, but I also have better orgasms with my vibrator while I'm being touched by a partner than on my own. And they get to be included in that. So there's just so many ways to go about it. And, and instead of it just being one or the other, and I think we are dealing still with a culture that has a lot of sex toy shame and that our bodies should be able to do everything. And that's just not true. Plus, we have the technology now, so why not utilize it? Yeah. And if y'all want to try some amazing vibrators, hmm, where should you go? I would go to www.purepleasureshop.com. Purepleasureshop.com. Use coupon code Shameless Sex. You get 15% off, and you support me and my mommy, because I own a sex shop with my mom online while she runs it. I'm just hanging out. And you, you, don't, you all don't have like every single sex toy. You all we have focus only on the best. only the best. The best. Yeah. That's from the beginning. It's sex for like anybody, anybody. but also body safe Yes. Product. Not all sex toys are created equal. Um, there's a lot of things that are still toxic on the market using rubber jellies and things. You never want Phalanx. your sex toy to smell. Yeah, you don't want to smell like anything. Actually, you don't want to smell. And I mean, mean smell like plastic or something. You don't want to smell like chemicals. If it does, do not use that. Put a condiment or something. You don't want it to burn. No burning. Um, okay, one other thing before we do the bio and dive right into the podcast. Let's talk about Dipsy. So constantly, constantly I'm hearing from people I'm working with. I do sex and relationship coaching. Um, folks are having a hard time feeling 
desire. A lot of um, vulva owners in particular are like, I'm not connected to my bodies, my arousal, and it's we live a busy life, so it's hard to do on our own. Dipsy has been life changing for them, including myself and just so many people I know. What it is, it is a app on your phone that has erotic short stories. They change them every single week. You can get turned on anywhere, anytime. They're really, really well done. They're very tasteful and they are hot as fuck. April, what do you love about Dipsy? I love that. Not only can you listen to erotic stories of all cer- like all sorts of jo- genres. Oh yeah. You can also listen to the soundscapes that help Ooh. you go to sleep at night. If you haven't listened to this podcast before and you're just starting to listen, now you know I have to fall asleep with some sounds in the background. Drives me crazy we're in the same room. But. Uh, yeah, it does. Amy's like, can you please turn it off? I'm well, like, I'm a sensitive sleeper. Yeah. yeah, so I have to put on my headphones when I sleep next to Amy. <laughs> However, they have soundscapes to also help you drift off to sleep. It's also wellness oriented, which mm-hmm. erotic can be well too. It is. Sexual health and wellness. So for our listeners, your shameless sex listener, Dipsy is offering a 30-day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash shameless. That's a 30-day free trial when you go to D-I-P-S-E-A stories.com slash shameless. Dipsystories.com slash shameless. All right. You ready for a bio, Amy? Yeah. All right. Glenise Kennard Moore is the founder of Schemu Tech and the creator of the VDOM. The VDOM is the first app connected prosthetic genital device that can go from flaccid to erect at the push of a button. An information security consultant by profession and an ambitious tech creative at night, Glenise is a self proclaimed tech nerd. And she likes to say that her superpower is breaking apart many things to create new things. To learn more, visit thevdom.com. Let's dive on into that interview. All right, everyone, it is interview time, and today we are here with Glenise to talk about G-spots and sex toys for penetrative sex and probably all the in-betweens because we like tangents, too. Uh, so without further ado, we will dive right in. Glenise, we always start with the same question, or actually, I remember it's a statement. It's not a question. Um, it's a demand, as it's you a say. Demand. It's yes, a demand. Yes, a demand. You will listen to me. Um, please tell us how you got to where you are today in the field of sexuality. Absolutely. Thank you all for having me. I appreciate it. Um, But to dive right in. So uh, there's a quote out there that says all great things started out of a necessity. And that's how my product was created. Um, I identify as a lesbian woman and uh, as a lesbian woman, it's a little hard to have spontaneous sex, fun sex uh, anytime, anywhere. And I just wanted to create something or find something that could, you know, fulfill that need. And when I started to research, trying to find products, I realized there was something out there. So I took it upon myself and said, hey, let me be the one to try this out. Why not? Nice. Why not? Uh, So... Okay, the field of I guess the the broad general sex tech is it's coming up more and more. We we see it more and more. It's actually they even have a an electronics trade show that sex tech is actually allowed back at after years. So um, and sex tech is awesome. We're in twenty twenty one right now, and in the times of of, of quarantine, it, people were really dependent on it. So uh, thank you for for the work that you do in creating something for folks out there. And so we're talking specifically about this app controlled prosthetic genital device here that you created. So why is it that, so until you invented this, and why do you think that there were prosthetic arms, prosthetic legs um, out there, but not genitals? So that is actually a double-headed sword because um, I honestly didn't know that the VDOM was going to be a prosthetic, quote unquote, until I started to really, you know, dive into the science, dive into the engineering, um, dive into what is not available. And, you know, so it it really was and is a uh, Ferrari of strap-ons, honestly, (laughs) Um, but I started to utilize the word uh, prosthetic because it just makes the conversation easier when you're talking to someone who doesn't really, you know, who gets cringed and all uncomfortable when you use the word strap on or sex and all these types of things. I wanted to be able to really push the initiative. So I was like, you know, what? let me throw a prosthetic in the front 
And that'll help the conversation a little bit. It actually has. But the really crazy part is, especially after hearing so many stories about people who have had certain types of issues, regardless if they are, how, regardless of how they identify, heterosexual, male, female, doesn't matter. A lot of people across the board had an issue that was, you know, something associated with anatomical restrictions in some form or fashion. And there was nothing for them unless you had some type of really uh, plain one size fits all product off the shelf. Or if you had to go have this super invasive surgery or you had to take a pill. So just hearing all the stories and realizing there was absolutely nothing. And I'm even the last two years working on this on this product. It's been like, OK, somebody's going to come. Somebody's going to come with, uh, with something that's way smarter than me. And it still hasn't happened yet. It's mind blowing. So just realizing the need, realizing um, all the people, the, all the emails that I get, all the messages. Thank you for doing this. One that I cannot forget is a, a guy who fell off a roof when he was 16 and he's had ED the entire time of his life. He's now 40 years old. And he was like, thank you for creating this product because, yeah, it's, it's not you know so comfortable for me to go into a sex store and buy a strap on so that I can have a sex life. So just hearing those stories just realizing that there is no options out there. It was, yeah, it, it's, it just drove everything home to why this product needed to be made. Hmm. We'll try it. I, you know, I saw a video on your site of the product, so we'll try to put it on our site so that people can see because it's really innovative, which re- brings me to my next question. So the VDOM, can you explain what the purpose and function of it and also like who's using it and for what kind of play or engagement? Absolutely. So it is like I like I mentioned before, it's a traditional strap on, but we just added a little jazz to it. We added some electronic components to it. So instead of walking around with a woody all day um, with a traditional strap on or having to assemble something, uh, we decided to, hey, let's get this thing going from flat to erect. Um, OK, so let's how do we do that? What's the best way to do that? Um, well, the best way to do that is for somebody to not have to, you know, do something else awkward and that's stick their hands in their pants and push a button or have a remote control in their hand um, that is weird and out of place. Well, what's the next best thing? The next, be- next best thing is having your cell phone be the remote control for you, because I just had sex with my wife the other day and I changed the music three times in the middle of it. So <laughs> there we go. The cell phones. Um, smart watches, they're, they're always there, um, no matter what we're doing. So it was, you know, Hey, let's go ahead and put this remote control version on the, uh, actual, your mobile, a mobile app on your smartphone and push a button and you have an erection, push a button again, and you don't have an erection makes it simple. It can be worn all day. Um, anytime, anywhere, if you want to show that you have it on, you can. So if you want to bulge because you're maybe a trans man, um, and you want to show that you have a bulge, you can. If you don't, and you're somebody like me, I don't want people to know that I have a bulge, then it's flaccid enough to where you wouldn't know. So that's how it functions. So anytime, awesome. anywhere, you just with your if you have your phone or your uh, or your uh, wrist, I guess it's just an eye, an, a your watch, wrist, yeah. your your wrist watch, watch. your Apple Watch. You can, so yeah. you can control that just with the touch of that is so cool. That's awesome. I haven't ever heard of that before. There's, I mean, that that's yeah, well, there's the just first there of its kind packs. That yeah. Didn't, but then you have, you'd have to switch them out to a harder dildo or wear the harder yeah. dildo. And they tried to make some harder, the, some in-betweens, but the bulge was way too big. When I remember that being uh, a I, while ago, like, yeah. Yeah, I think Tantus had some, which was a great idea, but I remember the bulge was like, damn, that's a huge bulge huge. that you're packing <laughs> there. So, yeah. So I think that's really awesome that way. So, and this is, does, this is for all bodies, right? Penis owners, vulva owners. And does it, does it like come with a pair of shorts or underwear that you wear? And then it's for, you know, strap on or penetration, penetrative play generally, right? And you got it. You hit it right on the nail. Um, it is a custom pair of underwear that go along with the device it, itself. Um, and these custom pair of underwear were, um, they're custom because we had to make sure there's stability with the device at all times. Um, so we had to put some special uh, strapping throughout the uh, underwear themselves. They come in three different types, which are a lot of people are not the uh, boxer brief type person like I am. Um, but um, so we have a jock, we have a boy short, whatever your groove is, uh, we pretty much have it. And it's again, it just directly attaches through a simple O-ring, but the technology and the design um, is where it comes into the custom piece, where we have that stability that's bi- built within um, the actual underwear itself. We wanted to eliminate the whole 
go hot, find a harness, have all of these octopus type straps all over the place, um, having to assemble, get it adjusted just right. Um, and or having this, you know, tight leather thing that is, again, small, medium, large, but it really doesn't, you know, fit all of us. So <laughs> we just wanted to eliminate as much uh, hang ups that we possibly could with traditional products. And that's where the underwear and the device come into play. Well, that can also be used for multiple orgasms. If someone has, they're a penis owner and they uh, have a longer refractory period, you could put this on, right? I mean, would that work for those folks if they wanted to just like keep penetrating? Be um, hard whenever they want to. Yeah, that's yeah. so cool because we're not talking Absolutely. about just folks that have erectile issues. It's like, even if you don't, I, I think that's really, that's pretty much for, for anyone that wants to sometimes have a self to erect uh, VDOM on. Uh, so, okay, let's talk about penetration uh, and G spots because there's a lot of, uh, we've done lots of shows on G spot stimulation before, but there's still this theory. And some folks say um, that it's not a real thing. It is a real thing. Not everybody has one. So, what are your thoughts on the G spot? So, um, going back to just being a lesbian woman, it absolutely does exist. Um, what I find is, uh, because I've, it's been astonishing just to hear some of the feedback on people saying, oh, it doesn't exist. Oh, it does exist. It doesn't exist. So I did some research. I am a dork when it comes to research, research. So did some research and just wanted to see what, you know, some of the stuff that comes back from people, like what are people really saying about the G spot? And what I'm finding is people are too lazy to find the G spot. It's not a, it sits in the same spot for everybody. So um, I think that that's the problem, but it absolutely exists. It's a part of our anatomy. Some are a little further back, some are a little closer, so it's easier to find, but it absolutely exists. So I want to tell everybody out there, it exists, people. Go out there and find it. <laughs> it's alive. It's well, real. And I think that's sometimes why we like to say the a G area, although I always, I still say spot all the time, but I'll try to use G area on the occasion. The G area? The G area. The G area. Because G-area. then it's like, it, it's not just a one little spot, one little pinpoint spot, which I think that, which confuses people. Uh, and I think people think it's often like up and in and around a, a corner and hidden in the dark cave. And um, it's actually for a lot of folks further closer to the vaginal opening than people would think, but everyone's different. Mm-hmm. Um, and we've done episodes on on G-spot stimulation, but just like some little, little tips here for humans. You have a bladder on the other side. So sometimes when you press into a G-spot, it can feel like pressure on your bladder. And if you're new to that sensation, you might be like, this is weird. Um, but often there's good stuff on the other side if you continue to, to play with that. Um, what do you, this I, this question I'm, I'm going to ask you, I, I think I probably know your answer, but do you think that, um, let's see, how am I going to phrase this? that most people are capable of G-spot pleasure. Like everyone has some sort of G area, G-spot, but like most people are capable of that pleasure, even if they've never discovered it. Um, I think that it's probably a 90 percentile of who can actually be um, pleasured from the G-spot because again, everybody's body is totally different. The human anatomy is one amazing thing. Um, So even with the G-spot, there's some that are long, there's some that are short, there's some that protrude, there's some that don't. Um, like you said, some people feel like you have to go around a corner. Actually, you do. I'm not going to put out numbers of how many women I've had sex with, but <laughs> sometimes you do. You have to go around a couple of corners and do such things. But um, it, yes, I think that uh, it's a 90 percentile of if you could get pleasure from it or not. But again, it's going to come back to if you are actually being able to find it, but then you have to find how to pleasure it. I mean, but isn't that all about, you know, the dynamics of sex in the first place? Some people don't think that, you know, some people just go right in there. But if you're really, truly taking the time to pleasure somebody or pleasure yourself, you have to do the work to actually find it. This podcast was made possible by one of our favorite things to put in our mouths. Nope, not the duck. We're talking about Willy Willy hot sauce, y'all. Our friend Will makes the most mouthgasmic hot sauce right here in Santa Cruz. Like it's super hot? Try Willy Willy's hot sauce. Like it's sweet with a little kick? Try Willy Willy's sexy sauce. And because our friend Will, Willy Willy, wants you to get your O face on, anyone in the U.S. who buys two bottles for just $10 right now through July 27th, 2021, will get entered into a raffle to win free sex toys and lube. 
Just visit willywillyhotsauce.com slash shameless to add more hotness to your life. Say what? Not only do you get two tasty bottles of Willy Willy's Epic Hot Sauce, but you may also win a luxury vibrator from Hot Octopus, a bottle of Uber Lube, or free passes to our online sex ed classes. That's a Willy Willy good deal. But you only have two weeks to jump on it, so the time is meow. Go to willywillyhotsauce.com slash shameless to get your two for one for only $10 of some of what we think is some of the best hot sauce on the planet. And you may even get a few bonus orgasms along the way. That's W-I-L-L-Y-W. W-I-L-L-Y hotsauce.com slash shameless. Go check it out. This podcast was also made possible by omgs.com. OMGS is a research-based online program that teaches you all about how to pleasure the pussy. OMGS studied thousands of vulva owners to find out how they orgasm and then made beautiful animated modules and super honest short videos to give you ways to reach even more pleasure. I've been recommending OMGS to my clients for years and it's been changing their lives. We all know pleasure is fluid and ever-changing, so why not add more tools to your pleasure tool belt? OMGS is for everyone. So whether you are a vulva owner or you just love vulvas, OMGS will give you the techniques to get your O face on. There are two seasons to choose from and hundreds of gorgeous videos to explore. So go see what science says about pleasure and visit omgs.com slash shameless. That's omgs.com slash shameless to get $5 off your OMGS access. Again, omgs.com slash shameless. Go check it out. Now back to the show. It's also, I think it's important to touch on too, because I think people a lot of times associate, at least in, in my career, I've, I've, when I've talked to staff in retail stores and just uh, civil, you know, the civilians on the streets, when I do my poll. I, I don't do that. I should though. Uh, but they, they think that ejaculation comes directly with G spot stimulation and that's not necessarily the case. You can ejaculate definitely from uh, G spot stimulation, but they don't always go hand in hand. Right. It's, it's uh, something that, yeah. So it's like, it's, it's a, like a, the, I, I call it like the bonus, like blowing out the candle on a birthday cake. If it happens, it's like, like a little squirt. yeah. It's like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know, I, Glennis, you're kind of like the um, the the mecca, the gold uh, gold mine of uh, the the pot of gold for these questions because you're saying that you've pleasured a lot of vulvas and you have a vulva, so you actually know the sensations of things and you actually and have experienced it. Her name starts with a G. Oh, and you said, oh my God, that's why your name is Glennis. Glennis, absolutely. And my birthday on June the 9th, so six nine. So just go like just keep keep it going. <laughs> you were designed oh, to be in the sex toy yes, industry. You were. <laughs> uh, so do you have any tips for folks who are new to penetration using toys? So, and this could incorporate the G spot, which we just talked about G area. Um, obviously you have a product, but our listeners love any applicable tips. So, and a lot of people haven't really used sex toys for penetration. Um, I personally usually just go for the clit toy and I've dabbled with some penetration stuff with, with uh, sex toys. And honestly, I haven't found one that I love. And part of me is like, I kind of want human body parts, fingers and, and cocks and mouths and things. Um, so what if someone's new to that? What do you, what do you recommend? I suggest people really getting to know themselves. Um, one thing, one of the big reasons I think that sex is still so taboo is because people refuse to get to know themselves. Um, they get, and once they even do know themselves, they're so ashamed of it. It's so weird and awkward because it's like, this is your whole temple. This is your body. Um, and sex is on the hierarchy of needs. Um, coming is on this hierarchy of needs in my mind. So yes, um, definitely first start off with getting to know yourself. The second piece of that is find out what exactly your groove is. Um, the sex tech industry, the sex toy industry has been, you know, pretty straightforward until, you know, recently you either had vibrators or you had a dildo. Um, now there are so many more things. You have butt plugs, you have all types of stuff that's out here. Go find your groove before you just, you know, turn something down. Be creative. Uh, try it out. Try whatever. Try anything. Try something that you think, even if it just strikes you as like, oh, that is weird. The weirdest stuff probably is the best stuff. So try things out. Um, and especially when it comes to penetration, understand also what type of penetration you prefer. 
I know uh, some people who only like anal penetration. I know people that only like vagina uh, penetration. I know people who only like it in their mouth. I mean, hey. So find out what your group is and really tap into that and don't feel shame. That's the third piece of that. Just don't feel shame. Our bodies are our temples. Get to know it. Get to know it in all of its parts. It's I, like, yeah, choose your own yeah. adventure. Choose your, your I like that. Yeah, your choose your own adventure choose book. Choose your own adventure. Well, and also when you try and sex toys too, um, a couple of things might be one, at least for me, like sometimes when I try a sex toy, I don't like it the first time. Um, if I hate it, then I'm not going to the use it again. But three. yeah, the rule of three, like give it a second or third shot. And then also not all penetration toys toys are created equal, or maybe that's the wrong way to put it, but they're you know, maybe they're they're work they work different for different people, right? Differently for different right. people. Um, so if you try one toy that's for penetration, it's not your jam. Am. Don't be like me and rule out all penetration toys. Go try That's other hard. things. Exactly. <laughs> and there's so many toys out there on the market that also are designed for du- the dual action product sometimes where yes. they, I, I never understood. I, we talked about this. I don't know. Amy and I talked about this maybe yesterday. And we were t- talking about the, the rabbit vibe, right? That was like <laughs> the phenomenon of the mid 2000s or maybe it was the early 2000s. And that thing, every time we both we both were talking about it when we worked at Pure Pleasure when she owned this brick and mortar store. And we were like, who? who like there, there are, probably is 2% of the population yeah, who does this work for? <laughs> that this could actually stimulate internally and the clitoris at the same time because of the little bunny here. So it's like you try these products because you hear about them and then they don't work for your body. So then you give up on either you give up on sex toys or you're like, oh, I don't like this. So it is important to learn about your body and also to try different varieties of products. So and there's so many out there now. And the VDOM is is badass. I actually am unfamiliar. So I'm going to have to go do my little research and development after, uh, after we're done recording with you, because, um, I love sex tech. I work in, you know, with a sex tech type company as well. And, uh, I, I'm a nerd when it comes to, uh, evaluating tech in toys, especially when it's as inclusive as something like the VDOM. So, um, I think that's really cool. So shout out to you. That's just a side note. There's a question Great that I'm going to ask you though. <laughs> yeah. The G spot genius Glenny. <laughs> so, uh, you talk about the myth that lesbians don't like penetration. And, uh, uh I, obviously I, I would like to know more about this. Can you, can you tell our listeners, uh, why you, why you talk about that? And then, uh, is penetration for everyone, which you kind of touched on already, but I think we should just, you know, uh, circle circle back for folks let's start off with saying that penetration is not for everyone um and i will i want to get a little deep in this in terms of helping people understand that it's sometimes a little bit more complex than we even realize i had to learn this as a um person who's building a product like this and i'm marketing it to an lgbt community um i'm marketing it to you know um guys to utilize on whomever, women, men, whatever. But I had to realize this. Some penetration is attached to trauma. So first off and foremost, that's the first piece of it. Um, Everybody doesn't particularly care for it. The second piece of it is sensation. Everybody doesn't care to have something stuck in somewhere. Um, And that's just okay. Um, And that's, that's, that's the first two pieces that I really just wanted to throw out there. But to I am I am now confident enough. I've talked. I feel like I've talked to enough lesbian, queer, bisexual, uh, butch women, and I feel like I can really say this for all of us that women do like penetration. Lesbians, butch, queer, a lot of us like penetration. We just don't want it from a man. That's what makes us who we are. So people get that confused. I was talking to some of my guy friends and they were just like, I'm just confused. You're a whole lesbian woman. You've only had sex with lesbian women. You're building a penis. <laughs> like, penis. like this, this just doesn't make any sense. They were just mind blown. They just couldn't figure it out. And I said it simple to them. Yes, you're absolutely right. I just don't want, you know, penis from a guy. That's it. Mm -hmm. There's so many things that make up, you know, our human anatomy in terms of a guy versus a woman. There's so many different things. So, hey, yeah, you're right. I don't want to have, you know, sex with a guy, but I absolutely do with a woman. And a lot of the women that I like, like penetration. 
but and that's also with so and I do not say this often like because I don't like the term pocket pussy but for the lack of uh, a better term these days besides like masturbator for penis owners uh, the quint the quintessential pocket pussy also for penis owners some folks don't want to have uh, fuck a pussy, right? Mm-hmm. So some right. folks with penises, and that's why th- that there's all of these innovative, uh, more I I call them uh, h- like higher end masturbators for penis owners too that don't look like a butt, a butt, a mouth, vagina, an avatar yeah. vagina. They're not so so. Ana- sometimes there's anatomical things that people do enjoy uh, having inside of them or putting themselves inside of, and sometimes it's just right. It's it's not one size fits all, and the more people, the more different varieties of things that people are into so it's important yeah of course lesbians may not want to be penetrated with an actual cock but doesn't say they don't like penetration and and i think that to the to the mix and not always even with a cock like you just said sometimes it's just fingers i mean that's that's my sex life sometimes you know what i mean so i totally get it and i respect it but in the vdom is for something is a is a product for people who want the vdom Period and point blank. I'm not trying to change minds about it. I am trying to elevate minds like, hey, you now have an extra option. Um, you know, so if you want to have sex in the alley, you can now. You don't have to find, you know, you don't have to wash your hands, brush your teeth or anything like that. Um, you, you totally can. But other than that, that that's, that's what we're pushing over here. You have another option. You have another opportunity. Why not? Hmm. Yeah. And I think the whole thing about uh, lesbians don't like penetration is coming from such a penis centric model that penetration means cock. And if you don't like cock, then you must not like penetration instead. Like let's separate the behavior from the people we're attracted to. And the, you know, the behavior is penetration that doesn't have anything to do with our orientation or the people that we're into. Just like, you know, a, a man who like, like, you know, a penis owner liking to be pegged in the ass doesn't mean he's gay, you know, doesn't, but people still have these thoughts about it. And I think it's very heteronormative and penis centric, um, a model and sexuality that we're, that we're living in and people are still stuck in it. Um, so your product or, right after this, April's going to go watch the video cause it's pretty cool. Um, I, I watched it. It was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and your product is awesome. And I'm wondering if you can tell our listeners how they can find your product. Is it currently available? Are you in retail stores? Is it just online? How can they find you, work with you, stalk you, all of the above? <laughs> Absolutely. So uh, right now it is um, only available uh, via pre-order right now. We have yet to launch. We're about six weeks out from launching. Uh, we were actually supposed to launch in April, but unfortunately, just like car dealerships, everybody is are feeling the woes of the pandemic. Uh, the supply chain is just all over the place right now. Um, it's starting to pick back up, but yeah. That's a whole other story. Um, But we are currently doing pre-orders on our website, uh, which is www.thevdom.com. And we are vetting retail uh, outlets right now to see, because this is the thing about the VDOM. We want to make sure that it is, you know, something that is placed in the right location for the right people at the end of the day. So we're just now starting to really look into the retail space, uh, look into the distributors to see who's going to be the best fit. We are doing something a little bit different in terms of a lot of products out there are, you know, less than $200, $300. Our product goes for $675 at retail, um, but it, we're doing a super deep discount right now. I'll get into that in a second. But because of that, we're, we're working with a different kind of, you know, baby here. So we, we're trying to make sure we find the right um, outlets for the products. So right now, it, you could, it's only available on our website. Uh, but outside of that, the social side, you can absolutely follow us um, on our social media platforms. We are on IG, which is the dot VDOM, um, on Twitter, VDOM ATL, because we have to rep our city. And <laughs> same thing for uh, Facebook. We are VDOM ATL as well. And we're just now getting around to getting on TikTok. Super excited about that. And of course, you can find us on YouTube. Nice. Well, the VDOM 675. Oh, that makes sense, though, based on my knowledge of manufacturing. You're mm-hmm. talking about an app. You're talking about something that goes many different positions anatomically as well, like moving like a like robotic. It's a robotic. Yeah, it's high end sex tech. So it makes sense. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, that's not that's not as a uh, scary. You got a robot in your pants, right? And <laughs> there are just... in your pants. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> TM, TM that. Uh, you can have it. Yeah. Well, I appreciate learning more about you and your product, and I I'm excited to watch the video that Amy has 
uh, been raving about. And uh, thank you for sharing your wisdom of G spots and uh, and. I'm still curious about your number. I'm just kidding. I'm not curious about your number, but I love how you said that. You're like, I don't want to talk numbers, but I've had sex with a lot of people. <laughs> and that's that's good. That's like research and development. That's mm-hmm. why you make research an awesome product. So, that's what I've talked about yeah. to be. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. So thank you, though. Uh, and we, uh, we're we so excited to share uh, the VDOM and, and, and uh, this information with the world. So thank you. And to all of you out there, if you want to raise a glass to VDOM with us. Go check out Margins Wine because we love ourselves some Margins Wine. Remember, it's boutique small batch wine made by women. And it's not just for women. It's for anyone who likes wine out there. Amy and I have been huge fans for years. Go to marginswine.com and you just sign up for the newsletter and you'll be in the know. Only a few releases a year and you can save some money, honey, too, if you want to. Just go to our website and you can uh, uh, look up the coupon codes because there's two. You can save 10 They're in the show notes, actually. They're in the show yeah. so notes. So wherever you're listening, it should pop up. If you drank too much wine, you might not be able to to read it, but you can at least just click uh, the link. You just click the link and it's fine. So uh, go check that out. And to everyone out there who loves themselves some shameless sex uh, and wants more people to find us so they can get themselves educated as well, go to iTunes, give us five stars. We read every single one of your reviews. We love, love, love reading them and we love you so much. We'll see you next Tuesday. Ciao for now. Want to learn more? Go to shamelesssex.com. And for 15% off of some of our favorite sex toys, use code shamelesssex at purepleasureshop.com.